Welcome back to the Competitor Talk. This is your host, Kyle Dangler. This podcast is presented by Lab Creative Works, and today we're going to have guest Jamie Schultz of the Los Angeles Dodgers. He's a relief pitcher for them. This is his first year with the Dodgers. He was just traded there in January from the Rays, so we're just going to give him a call now. We're going to talk about his career, um, a little bit about his experience in the majors and minors, and some of his college experience days at High Point University down in North Carolina, so we're going to give him a call right now. Hey, man. How's it going? Hey, how's it going? It's Kyle. It's good, it's good. Good, how are you? Yeah, so we're just on the podcast right now, and then we'll get started. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah, so, I mean, just can you know speak a little bit about your time at uh, High Point University? Uh, I know not you know, a lot of people know it, but, you know, just your time there. Yeah, absolutely. Um, being from upstate New York, I kind of wasn't really recruited um, too much um, in, the, in the South, and actually got a chance to play in front of Coach Peters when I was there, uh, down in uh, Georgia and got a chance to take a look at High Point. He told me to come visit, and um, after that, I fell in love with it. It's, uh, it's a beautiful campus. Uh, yeah, yeah. The facilities are great, and I had a great time there uh, playing three out of the four years I was there. Uh, obviously, I redshirted one year, but yeah. it, it was an incredible experience. And uh, I think uh, Coach Kozar did a great job um, kind of developing all of us, to, uh, not only to be better baseball players, but definitely better people in general. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, just being down there, so you redshirted your first year and then you finished out your last three down there? Um, I, I played my first first year there, and then I had Tommy John at the end of okay. my freshman year. So I redshirted my sophomore year there. Yeah, so, you know, just speaking with Tommy John, you know, we've had other people on the show with a similar in- injury. Would you say it was more of, you know, being used too much or, you know, just a freak accident or, you know, not, you know, recovering well enough? What happened? Um, I wouldn't I wouldn't say being used too much. I think it's just a culmination of the innings you've logged, like, beforehand. Yeah. Um, obviously, I was playing travel baseball, pitching and playing a position, and, you know, it just takes a toll on you, and I think it's something that eventually, like, if, if your body's going to give in, it only has a, a certain amount of time to do it. And my time just happened to be re- as, a, as a freshman in college, you know? Yeah. So, uh, you know, just in your time at college, did you play in any, like, the Cape Cod League, the Northwoods League, like, anywhere around there? Yeah, so I was supposed to play in the Coastal Plains League after my freshman year, but obviously yeah, Tommy, Tommy John yeah. sent me back from that, but... Um, I ended up going to play for the uh, Chatham A's uh, Cape Cod League, and that was, that was one of the best experiences I've ever had. Yeah, so you, can you just speak a little bit about Because not, I don't know, uh, you know, I know what the Chatham A's are, obviously, but I didn't know, like, if you could just speak on, like, you know, what the routine was like up there, because, you know, just for people with, listening. Yeah, so, I mean, the uh, Cape Cod League uh, is a summer ball league for um, college guys, and uh, a lot of people consider it to be one of the best leagues. Yeah, absolutely. I think this crazy, crazy rate of people that go on to play in the majors after that. But um, I guess for, for people that are outside of baseball, you could put it as a, it's a Freddie Prince Jr.'s team in uh, Summer Cat. <laughs> yeah. But um, it, it was an amazing experience. Um, I got to uh, play under Coach John Schiffner, who's like the all-time winningest coach in Cape Cod history, okay. and, you know, Hall of Famer and everything like that. I mean, a lot of my teammates either are still playing in the minor leagues or have already made it to the major leagues. So, um, yeah, that's awesome. A couple, couple guys we play against is like Aaron Judge, okay. uh, Aaron Chigailo, like Daniel Polka. All those yeah. guys were in that league at that time, so it was incredible. Yeah, so would you know, just playing there, what did you play after your sophomore year there or junior year? Uh, I played as a redshirt sophomore, so redshirt. I was a junior in college then. Yeah, so, I mean, just going back, you know, playing there and then, you know, going back to college, would you say that tremendously helped you? Because I know I've, we talked to a couple other people on the podcast, you know, they said, you know, once they came back, you know, they really felt like they were ready to, you know, take that next step in their career. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and a lot of the guys... Uh, get drafted kind of out, of out of that league i actually okay. was able to go back to college and play against them play against the competition there one more time yeah. um and it, it definitely developed me uh like you go in there and you're facing air judge caliber guys and not, not to knock on anyone else in college baseball but like, there's only a few few guys that are that talented yeah. it kind of gives you that edge to go back and be like you know what 
I can I can handle my business here and, and move on to the next thing after that. Yeah, so you know, just uh, your senior year, you know, you started a few games and you were a reliever a few games. Were you mostly a starter for your, most of your college career? I know now you're a reliever. Do, were you just kind of you know doing both? You know, whatever the team needed. Um, it was it was kind of just a build up thing. There's always kind of like an injury that I, I kind of had during the start of the year. Well, it was freshman year I came in. Obviously, you kind of got to earn your spot. And yeah, then yeah. I, I relieved and then started. And then coming back off of Tommy John, you want to limit your innings. And then So uh, yeah. that senior year kind of broke my hands um, on winter break. And I had to kind of slowly get back into the swing of things and build back up to become a starter at the end. But um, after that, I mean, moving through the – the minors. I was a starter this whole, the entire time up until about 2017. So I really don't have a preference. Yes, you know, just going through the minors. You know, you know, people, you know, know it's a grind and stuff. But you know, in your experience, I mean, could you tell like every level, every level got better? You know, could you tell? You know, as you moved up and up, you know, the talent got better. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, I think it, it's still kind of getting better. I mean, I've been in AAA on and off here for the past three years and yeah. I feel like each year players are getting better and better and definitely moving up throughout the ranks you can tell and it's a it's a tough game and people get weeded out like eventually as you're moving yeah, up yeah. And there's always new talent coming in to try to take your spot so it's always definitely a grind yeah so you know just you know we've had a few other guys on the show uh, you know who made the MLB you know they talked about you know that feeling you know like they remember the exact moment can you just speak you know when you got called up at first with the Rays you know like where were you like how did you feel like stuff like that oh yeah um I was in uh, Louisville we were playing a, a four game series out there and yeah. uh coaching staff kind of called me down and they said hey grab your glove and I was I'm not, obviously not going into pitch right now it's kind of <laughs> weird that they're calling me down here and they uh just told me to tell my family and my wife that I was uh going up to the major leagues and after that it kind of just got a little crazy and hectic I was just had so many emotions running yeah. through my head and everything like that but um I got to fly down to Tampa ended up not pitching in that game so had to fly across the country to Oakland and about two days later I made that debut yeah. and it was uh it'll, that, that moment will definitely sit in my head forever yeah, so, I mean, like, were the butterflies extra that day, you know, just, you know, ramped up? Um, honestly, I think leading up until the actual time I went in, it was pretty crazy, but it's probably one of the most calm, calming uh, times I've ever been on a mound. It, it really, oh, really seemed like slow motion for me, which was uh, lucky, I guess. Yeah, so I know you mentioned uh, before, you know, through most of your minor league career, you were a starter, and then in 2017 you moved to a reliever. I mean, was it just... Was it a coaching decision? You know, was it your decision? You know, what what kind of happened? Um, I think it was a coaching decision. Uh, obviously, yeah. they give me a, a lot of opportunities as a starter. And, you know, as a starter, they kind of want you to go those six, seven innings. I was kind of shorter in the five to six inning rate. I'm okay. throwing a lot of pitches. But uh, I think they wanted me to help the team uh, as a reliever, 17 that year. And unfortunately, I got hurt again, so kind of uh, threw a wrench in the, in the uh, process there but uh, I think it's I think it's turned out pretty well and I'm, I'm I feel like I'm starting to come into my own as a reliever it's, it's definitely something you have to learn and it's a uh, completely different tactics and and uh, pressure spots you're in but I'm, I'm enjoying it yeah what was your uh, injury then was it an uh, arm I injury pulled my, uh, pulled my groin all right so were you out for you know a few months then yeah, or a month? yeah. I was out for for about three months rehabbing, and then I came back towards the end of the year, started throwing, and uh, ended up tearing my meniscus later that year. But wow. after the uh, after the season of 2017, I had uh, two surgeries to fix that, so I've been feeling great since then. Yeah, so you know, just being a reliever, you know, that mentality, you know, when you were a starter, can you, you know, walk into the ballpark, you know, you know, you're starting the game, or you know, you got you're on one of your four days of rest in between starts. Now being a reliever, you know, is there a different mindset, you know, walking into the ballpark, you know, preparing for you, knowing that you could pitch yeah. any day? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you definitely have to pick and choose your, your spots to lift and run a little harder. Um, 
you have to come prepared to, to pitch every day, no matter if you've gone two days in a row. You know, you, you, there's always the possibility you're up, and uh, it's uh, it's kind of a different mindset. Obviously, like you have your your work days as a starter where you go in, and you're thinking about just tossing and lifting and running, blah blah blah. Yeah. But then those times when you show up to the park every day, you're ready to go now. So it's definitely been a little change. Yeah, I mean, like, you know, what's, like, your routine? You know, do you get to the ballpark early? Do you lift before or after games? I know if, uh, some guys, lift, you know, have a preference. You know, what's your schedule like? Uh, yeah, definitely. I'll, I'll get in there, foam roll, hot tub a little bit, get some treatment if I need it, and then um, go play catch and run. And then generally I'll, I'll lift before the games and whatnot. And then if I get in the game, we do a little arm care afterwards and keep everything strong and and start all over again the next day. Yeah, so you, do you use any, like, heat or ice? Do you know, do you have a preference there? Because I know guys do both, or, you know, guys have a preference. What's your preference? Um, I've kind of stay, stayed away from ice. Um, more of a hot tub guy. Uh, before I go out to the game, get the body warm and loose. And it just kind of keeps the blood flowing through there to create a little um, recovery. So I'd say definitely heat. Yeah, so, you know, when you you know, pitch like two days or three days in a row, you know, do you ever have to, you know, do the coaches, you know, come to you and be like, yeah, can you go a fourth day or can you go a third day? I mean, how does the communication work, you know, so you're not pitching too much where, you know, you're doing too much, you know, putting too much of a burden on yourself and, you know, being honest with the team? Uh, yeah, definitely. There's those days where they might need you, you know, in an emergency spot and they're pretty good about coming around and asking how everyone's feeling and, They'll never throw you in there if you really can't go. But generally, I think uh, all the guys out here in the bullpen are competitors and never really turn down the opportunity to throw. But um, if, if you go about two or, two or three days in a row, they'll, they'll definitely give you some time off, especially uh, multiple innings. They'll give you try to get you a few days off. Yeah. So, you know, just being a reliever, um, you know, what's your mentality going into the game? I mean, do you watch film before the game or, like, before the series on, like, you know, bat all the batters? Or, you know, how do you prepare for yourself? Do you look at charts? You know, what do you do? Um, well, at this point in the season, we've kind of faced these guys a few times, so we have, we have a good idea and understanding of how to get them out. But generally, before a uh, series starts, we'll go over, as a uh, group of pitchers, what's a safe zone, what pitches are good, uh, where to throw, and... Honestly, I think a lot of the guys take into account what what their strengths are and yeah. try to attack a hitter on their strengths rather than the hitter's weaknesses. Okay. Yeah. So, I mean, what pitches do you throw specifically? I know you throw a fastball. You know, what other stuff do you throw? Um, I throw a fastball, curveball, and I've kind of developed a, nice, a, a little cutter this year. So, it's okay. uh, definitely helped me out a lot. Now, did you have more pitches in your arsenal when as a starter, and then you know you cut it back? You know your main pitches as a reliever, or were you always just like that? Um, I didn't really have that cutter and slider thing when I was yeah. a starter. But I like, did you have a change up or change up? Oh, yeah, okay. yeah. And so now I, I don't really throw the change up just because the, the situation doesn't really call for it. But if I needed it, I guess I could still go back to it. But it's always kind of been like a three pitch, yeah. three pitch mix. Yeah. So you know just. You know, you were with the Tampa Bay Rays, you know, for about, like, uh, six years. I mean, you just got traded in the offseason to the Dodgers. Uh, can you just talk about your experience, you know, with the Dodgers so far? You know, was it a tough transition going? Um, it actually wasn't a tough transition at all. Uh, the staff and the players were extremely welcoming and friendly. And um, as far as, you know, development of pitching, it's, it's been a... Uh, it's been pretty quick with them. Uh, kind of hopped in and worked with some guys that I've never really met before, and, and things have just kind of clicked for me here. Uh, it's, a, it's a great organization, and they they really care about developing their players. Yeah, so you know, was there any you know specific you know coach that you have now, or anyone that you, know, you kind of get your tips from, or do you kind of just you know do your own thing? Uh, right now, obviously, um, I'm working with. Billy Seamus, who's our pitching coach here, okay. and uh, Will Ironton, who kind of shows us the statistics and the, the path of our pitches and whatnot. But um, earlier in spring training, Gabe Rivas was a pitching coordinator that really helped me. and I worked with him early on in spring training. I, th I think he's uh, really really helped me out so far this year. Yeah, so are you, you know, you mentioned, you know, the path of your ball, you know, one of the guys was helping you with. Do you guys look at, you know, like spin rate on the balls a lot, or are you just more focused, you know, on placement and command? Um, I would say we're focused on placement and command, but in the back of our mind, 
we know our strengths and, and where to throw based off of those those uh, spin rates and etc. So I mean, they kind of lay out a, a foundation, and it's it's up to us to uh, put that to use and attack based on what those numbers tell us. Yeah. So you know, just you know, from your time, you know, being with the Rays, you know, back in 2013 and now, can you see, you know, just how much the game has evolved? You know, like you're talking about like stat cast and you know pitching like video you know uh spin rate you know can you just tell how much the game has evolved in you know the technology aspect oh yeah absolutely i mean when i first got drafted obviously we we're in the minor leagues so we don't exactly see all of our numbers and etc but i think it was all that stat cast and spin rate and everything like that was just coming into into uh its own just then and you see within three four years from there every single team has a uh, has a rap soto or a, or a, something that measures those stats and it kind of has <laughs> just exploded yeah. here recently especially with uh stack has being on tv now so everyone wants to look at that it, it, it's been a pretty crazy past few years you know with uh, exactly. everything with the technology yeah, yeah so you know just being you know with the dodgers now i mean you know you were with them in the beginning of the year can you just speak you know how it felt to, you know, dress as a, a Los Angeles Dodger, you know, play for them for a few games? Uh, yeah, I mean, it, it was um, incredible putting on a Los Angeles Dodgers uniform. It's such a, a story franchise. And obviously, going to Dodger Stadium was so historic and pitching in front of 45, 50,000 people on a Sunday is incredible, you know. Yeah. Never pitched in front of a crowd like that. And, uh, those fans are incredible, and they back everyone every day, and they certainly show up every day too. Yeah. So, can you know just not knocking on the Rays or anything, but you know with the Dodgers, can you feel more of a sense, you know, being at the World Series the past two years, more of you know a championship mindset? Yeah, yeah. I mean, both teams definitely have one goal in mind, and that's making the playoffs and moving on to the championship and, and winning the World Series. But uh, the Dodgers and Rays couldn't be more opposites about how they go about it um it's pretty crazy uh just going in and, and seeing highlights and, and videos about previous years you know kind of have little hype videos of like what they did in the nlds what they're doing in the world series and yeah. and it, it's incredible to be part of an organization that's uh in it to win it every single year yeah definitely yeah so you know just you know being this year with the dodgers you know you've kind of had like some up and downs this year so far with your stats. I mean, have you been doing anything specific to, you know, progress and, you know, get back up to the majors? Oh, yeah. I mean, every day you kind of work on something with your mechanics yeah. and timing and whatnot. But, um, like you're honing in on anything specific, you know, like your release point, uh, you know, your mechanics, like your lower half or anything? Um, I wouldn't say my release point, but definitely uh, my front side and okay. keeping that closed is, is a huge uh, a huge thing for me. If I get a little bit rotational, I start yanking balls, and that's when I lose my location and start throwing balls. So I think front side and uh, yeah, leg drive is huge at this time of year, just with your arm being a little more fatigued halfway through the season. But yeah, definitely front side, keeping locked in there. So, getting on the plate with some strikes now can you are you doing any specific drills with that you know to make sure your body stays um you know straight and narrow to the plate i mean do you have anything you know technology or you know different exercises you can do to you know help you improve um yeah definitely i mean you throw sides here and there if, if you haven't really got in and you kind of just look at that video to focus that you're on there but um a lot of a lot of core stability a lot of um uh, just mobilization and, and you know just keep it flexible so your hips are kind of separated from your back rotation and whatnot there, there's a lot of stuff that we do all the time yeah. yeah 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 so you know just being uh with the rays and the divers i'm just curious you know the rays are so you know high on you know the shift and whatnot and, you know it's really evolved and you know changed the game where you know every team's doing it now i mean are you a big believer in the shift uh, helping the game or you know is are you more on the side of you know it's taking away hits you know it's taking away runs stuff like that um you know for as much as people complain about it i, I really think that uh it, it ends up evening out and they say they take all these hits away and, and there's rob in the game and whatnot but there's always going to be a time where everything comes back around though someone will hit a bleeder down the line yeah. and, and opposite of the shift so 
I mean, <laughs> sometimes like you get that shift, you're in love with it. If it may, if you get yeah. out from it, but if you give up bloopers and stuff that are through the shift, then then you hate it. So it's kind of it's kind of take it or leave it for me. Yeah. So you know, just growing up, you know, obviously playing baseball and stuff. Did you have any you know role model? Or, you know, any player you looked up to that kind of you were like, I want to be this guy, you know, has helped you, you know, keep your mentality and your, your goal set in mind? Um, growing up, I was a huge Derek Jeter fan. And right. uh, just kind of seeing the way he went about his business, he's a professional all the time, and he was yeah. just a winner in general. I kind of wanted to be him. And obviously now I'm, I'm no longer a position player, uh, and I have <laughs> to focus on pitching. So I just, I just look at all these guys that have uh, – historically been fantastic closers and back end of the bullpen guys and i kind of just try to see their mentality and how they attack the game and it kind of seems that they're not really affected by the pressure situations and i I try to find myself on not really getting swept away in the moment so i think i look at those guys like craig campbell and you know mariano rivera who are pretty even keeled throughout their uh, careers yeah so you know just you know talking about relievers and stuff and you're talking about your mindset i mean Do you more of, you know, with like Kenley Jansen and, you know, Joe Kelly, players like that, do you more of just watch what they're doing, you know, try to replicate it? Or, you know, do you ask for like tips, you know, like stuff like that? Uh, There's been definitely conversations on on how they go about it, tips and what they're thinking. But a lot of it is just just watching them and you can learn what they do and what their mentality is from the results attacking hitters throwing pitches when you think that it's a bad count for it they just they just trust their gut go with their best stuff and they don't really seem phased no matter what the outcome is you know yeah yeah. so you know just speaking about you know mindset and you know mentality i mean what's your mindset you know are you just kind of you know like do your job kind of the guy like you know just like keep yourself do your business and you know go home or are you kind of you know more trying to take on like a leadership role i mean how do you go about it uh, I think kind of off the field, I try to be that vocal leader, you know, talk to the guys and, and be friends with everyone, keep everyone's spirits up. But um, on the field, I'm definitely a, a pitch at a time, go about your business, you know, yeah. just try to get out as fast as you can. Yeah. So, I mean, do you more of, you know, on the mound, I mean, especially, you know, you can't second guess yourself, but do you ever find yourself, you know, second guessing what you're throwing or, not, I mean, or is your mentality more of, you know, I'm just going to go after him and, you know, do my thing? Um, I, I try not to second guess myself. I, I generally go with, you know, what I think my best pitch is in a, in a situation. Uh, that could be game to game, just how I feel, if the fastball is playing really well, if I'm controlling a curveball, you know, or if I just need a quick out and I'll throw that cutter. But uh, it, it's easy to second guess yourself after the fact something happens. But yeah. in that moment, you have you have to be all in. Yeah, so if you give up, like, you know, like a home run or, like, a big double or something, I mean, are you someone who goes back and, you know, thinks about it a lot and, you know, like, watches tape and, you know, goes over it a lot? Or are you just kind of, you know, throw that, brush that aside and, you know, go into the new day with a new mentality? Yeah, I, I, honestly, I, I'm a guy who's going to be pissed for about 10 to 15 minutes. And okay, and then I'm let it go. I'm going to get over it. And yeah. as, as a reliever, you have to have a, a real short memory. So that, yeah. that next day, it's like it never happened. And I'm back in there doing the same thing I do every day. Yeah, yeah. So I'm just curious, Um, you know, being a starter, you know, you know, have to keep your stamina up. But, you know, being a reliever now, I mean, do you find yourself, you know, throwing harder? I mean, obviously, you throw like 95, 96 right now. But do you, you know, kind of, you know, kick it into another gear knowing you're only going to go one or two innings and you'll know, throw harder? Uh, I think, at, yeah, at this point, you just kind of gauge it on the situation. You know, if it's the ninth inning, you can definitely go in there and blow it out and throw every pitch with max effort. But if, if you're going in early, you're expected to go multiples, you kind of just uh, establish yourself and then you can kick it into another gear if, if you need it from there. Yeah. So it's more of like based on, you know, situation? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So just a uh, last question, and then we'll let you go. I'm just curious, you know, on your, you know, opinion on, you know, the balls and th- these days, because, you know, people are saying they're juice. People are saying, you know, it's fine for the game, you know, home runs. People want to see that. I mean, what, you know, being in AAA, using the balls now in the major leagues, having the same balls, do you find that, you know, all these home runs and stuff are because of the balls being juiced, or would you say it's more of the launch angle? And is it, in either way, is it good or bad for the game, you think? Um, I definitely think there's it has something to do with the balls. Like there's there's home runs that are 
flying out that are reaching reach for pop-ups and etc and obviously numbers don't lie i think the home runs in the first month of the season were up like 61 percent or something yeah. crazy like that but uh, I, th- I you know i think it's all factors i mean you're playing in the pcl the ball kind of flies in that in that light air yeah and everyone's kind of moving towards hitting home runs and having that launch angle and the velocity goes up and the drag on the ball or whatever so i think it's all kind of accumulating and snowballing into this uh kind of just massive home run season yeah i mean do you just do you think personally like it's good for the game or bad for the game <laughs> i mean personally in my opinion i would rather see less home runs yeah um, being a pitcher and I think I think baseball is is great and it's been great for the past hundred and something years and I think the more you try to change it and the more you try to put your take on it, uh, the, the worse it's going to get. Honestly, it's I don't I don't like the whole change the rules, do this, do that, speed up the game. It, baseball is beautiful in its own way and it should be played like it has been for the past hundred years. Definitely. Yeah. Well said. Uh, so thanks for joining the podcast. You know, we wish you best of luck, you know, hope to see you in the majors soon and, you know, keep on grinding. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you. Have a good night. Bye. Bye. Thanks for listening. That was Jamie Schultz of the Los Angeles Dodgers relief pitcher. Have a good night. Community talk. This is community talk on the competitor talk. This is your host, Kyle Dangler. This podcast is presented by Loud Creative Works. Today, we're going to have guest Nicholas Nanarone. He goes to Seton Hall University. He's a fantasy football guru, right now majoring in accounting. He's going to be an incoming sophomore, so we're going to give him a call now. Just talk a little bit about the NFL, his uh, expectations for uh, the Giants, Jets, Raiders, Lions, a few other teams we're going to talk about, um, some quarterback situations, and then we're going to go into his predictions for the season, along with you know any early favorite Super Bowl favorites, in his opinion, and we're just going to you know talk about the season coming up. Hello. Hey, how are you? We're on the competitor talk live right now, so we'll just get going. All right, sounds good. All right, yeah, so, you know, just before you, know, you came on the show right now, uh, we had David Fales, backup quarterback for the Lions, so I just wanted to touch on them first. You know, Matt Stafford coming into his own, uh, you know, over the last few years, you know, putting up 4,000 yards in the previous seven years besides the last year. Just curious, you know, any – expectations for them coming up you know can they compete with the bears uh packers in the division than the vikings uh well I, I think the lions are actually still a very good team you know they have a it's a tough division the bears emerging on the scene last year you know the cup big year for them the vikings are a very good team as well and you know the packers you never know with the uh, Aaron Rodgers. but with the lions themselves i think you know getting damian harrison on defense will be big uh Kyrion johnson the running back will definitely be help Stafford now with the play action and help him develop a little more run games. I don't think he really had that in the past. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, just going off of, you know, talking about the run game and the defense, you know, they've always been a big passing team. But in the last few years since Calvin Johnson's left, you haven't really seen, you know, a prominent wide receiver there. So now, you know, looking at this year, they bring in Danny Amendola, Jermaine Curse, and then with the additions – with those two, last year they had Kenny Galladay, who had over a thousand yards, and Marvin Jones. Do you think this wide receiving core can get Matthew Stafford back to you know passing forty five hundred yards, you know, back to you know kind of the Pro Bowl guy we all hope he is? Uh, yeah, for sure. Uh, you know, they have like like you're naming. You have like four solid wide receivers right now, and then you can mix in run with the running with the running game. I think everything. I think Stafford's in a great position right now to. Um, you know, like go back to how he was and like, you know, a little rough year last year, but get back to his uh great way of playing this year. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, just moving off of the Lions, uh, coming back, you know, towards New Jersey, uh I know you're specifically a giant fan. Just wanted to touch on them first, just because, you know, there's a lot of controversy as we all know with their uh sixth overall pick with Daniel Jones. Just curious in your opinion, you know, coming into the season, Eli's supposed to be the projected starter. Any, you know, hopes, you know, do you want to see Eli start the games? Do you want to see Daniel Jones come in halfway through the year? What are kind of your expectations with the quarterback uh, competition? Uh, personally, for myself, you know, getting Daniel Jones that early, you know, I don't, I don't think it was the greatest move. But I say, you know, like, let Daniel Jones work behind Eli. I mean, Eli is a two, two-time Super Bowl champion. So let him work behind 
Uh, Eli knows what he's doing. He, this is his offense. Let Daniel Jones, you know, just get to see him in live action in the regular season. And if the Giants are struggling with Eli's quarterback, you know, give Daniel Jones that chance, you know, a quarter of the way, halfway through the season, and let him uh, work the offense on his own. Yeah, you know, just getting rid of Odell Beckham, you know, definitely hurt the team coming into the season. You know, expectations, I'd say, personally, aren't so high for the Giants just because, you know, getting rid of your best player, arguably, and then, you know, kind of bringing back a return that was decent but not, you know, Odell Beckham status. I mean, what are your expectations for the Giants? I mean, any chance, you know, they contend in the NFC East or, you know, is it going to be another down year, you'd think? Um, personally, I don't, I don't, I think it'll be, I don't think it's going to be a good year. I think they kind of like went with the clear house mentality this all season. Um, I think it's just coming off like a, I had a, a couple of losing seasons, not making the playoffs very often in the past couple of years. I think they're just trying to like re rebuild everything with draft picks and, you know, try to get, try to find out who the franchise quarterback can be in the future because I think Eli's time is clearly coming to an end. Um, you know, we also got rid of Landon Collins, a uh, you know, Pro Bowl safety. So we're getting our, we're a lot of our big names, and I honestly think this season's more just a rebuild and, uh, you know, just see see who's going to be the be playing your seasons. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, so, you know, just co- going off of, you know, what you just mentioned, you know, clearing house, obviously, you know, that's the Giants' direction. But turning to the other side of, you know, the New Jersey teams, you look at the Jets, you know, clearing house with the general manager and head coach, bringing in Adam Gase as the coach. And then also, you know, spending big money with uh, the additions of C.J. Mosley, Le- Le'Veon Bell. I mean, do the Jets have any chance? Obviously, you know, in my opinion, you know, the Patriots are going to win the division. Any chance you can see the Jets coming in as a wild card with the additions of, you know, a few prominent good players and then also with the emergence of Sam Darnold? Uh, with the Jets, you know, like like you said, like you mentioned, uh you're always working behind the Patriots when it's in your division. So with the Jets, the Jets are going to be difficult, but I think the Jets can definitely get that wild card spot. With Sam Darnold, you know, emerging onto the scene last season, you know, he had, a, I think he had a really great year, and then like he didn't, he, you guys added more weapons with Le'Veon Bell this year. I mean, look for guys like Robbie Anderson. I think to have a big, a big season with Sam Darnold because I think he started to find his, uh, his comfort zone late in the season. Um, I mean, they're I. Like I said, I think the Patriots will still win that division with Tom Brady. But you, you know, you, you grab second place in the AFC East, and you know, you never know what could happen in a wild card game. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, just going off of you know, you mentioned Robbie Anderson and you know Quincy Nunez coming back off of his injury last year, where he missed the whole season. Do you think the Jets need you know kind of a Pro Bowl or? a you know, prominent wide receiver in order to help Sam Darnold take the next step in his career? Or do you think the wide receiving core now, in your opinion, you know, can get them to the playoffs or, you know, just help them out? The team now, I believe, I think their team now could definitely make a wild card spot. But to make it to the next level against someone like those bigger offenses, like the Chiefs, like the Bears we were just talking about, like the, those like Pat, like those big the Pat Mahomes and stuff. Like to get past just the wild card round, I think you're definitely going to need a a better receiving core because like there's not like solidified like Pro Bowl name receivers you have on your team. You know, like having Le'Veon Bell will definitely help, but I don't think you have enough weapons. That the Jets have enough weapons to um, make it further than the wild card. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I totally agree. Just but you know. The offense, you look at the wide receivers, and, you know, the the depth isn't really there. But just switching over now to the Raiders, um, you know, big, you know, a lot of different moves they made this season in last season, you know, getting rid of Khalil Mack. You know, that was a questionable decision for the franchise. But then all of a sudden, you look at the team now, you know, three first-round picks coming in. Uh, Derek Carr coming off a bad year, but, you know, he's been a pro bowler. Any, you know, kind of expectations for the Raiders? I mean, can they really in your opinion, contend in the AFC West with the Chiefs and, uh, you know, San Diego Chargers and the Broncos? Um, you know, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not a big guy with the Raiders. Um, I'm not a big personal fan of John Gruden as the head coach of the team. You know, I don't think like, I think the, the problem is John Gruden, obviously the quarterback, Derek Carr, you know, like the faces of the franchise that I heard, like just based on rumors and news, they don't get a, 
get along too well, so I don't think that helps. You know, they got their they got all these picks from Cleo Mack, but Cleo Mack's like a type of like once in a lifetime player. Yeah. As a head coach, you'll get to have on your team, and I don't think get, getting rid of him was not very smart, even for first round picks, because first round picks just because it's a he's a first round player doesn't mean he's going to turn out to be Cleo Mack. So, yeah, yeah, I don't yeah. think that's doing too well. Yeah, you know, just looking at the team, though, going from last year to this year, you know, bringing in Antonio Brown and, you know, bringing in, you know, Josh Jacobs at the running back, any, you know, chance they can not necessarily win the division, but, you know, kind of hold their own rather than, you know, kind of have another, you know, clear house mentality season? Uh, well, yeah, last year, I think, well, they went 4-12. and 12. I think yeah they may they may be able to maybe go five hundred maybe go eight and eight maybe like a seven and nine type season maybe do a little better but I still don't think it'll be enough with the Chiefs and the Chargers in that division you know obviously Patrick Mahomes probably the best quarterback in the league last year and then like I still think the Chargers Philip Rivers and Melvin Gordon and all those guys I think the those two teams are definitely going to be in front of them in the end. So I don't think the Raiders really have a great shot this year. Definitely. Yeah, yeah. So just going out of the AFC West, um, you know, one of the teams that, you know, there's a lot of buzz around recently. And, you know, I can't believe I'm saying this is projected to win the AFC North is the Cleveland Browns. Just talking about Baker Mayfield coming off a great season last year. Uh, the Browns finished 7-8-1. and one. And, you know, the additions of Odell Beckham and then trading um, – you know, for a couple of different key players on the defensive side, along with, you know, Jarvis Landry coming back and, you know, getting Kareem Hunt, who will come in the second half of the year. Do you think the Browns can really make the next step in their, you know, kind of resurgence back into the playoffs? Uh, Well, yeah, I think the momentum's definitely in, they're going in their favor, you know, coming off a 7-8 and eight season where a rookie quarterback took them from, like, an 0-16 team to a 7-win team. And now, like, I believe the other teams in that division are also going to help them. You know, I know the Steelers are in that division. The Steelers have been good for years, but the Steelers just lost Le'Veon Bell and Antonio Brown. You know, the Ravens are obviously always a strong defensive team every year. Offensively, they're always questionable. But the Browns themselves, you know, with Baker coming off a great year, I think the momentum's in their favor. The signing of Odell Beckham, he's going to be playing alongside Jarvis Landry, who, like, both of them played together at LSU, so that... Obviously, they have some chemistry together. The the running backs just the running backs are deep with Nick Chubb, Duke Johnson, and obviously Kareem Hunt now. Uh, I think their offense is going to be really scary uh, this coming up season. Yeah, and even looking at the other side of the ball, you know, with the additions of Sheldon Richardson on the line, you have Miles Garrett already there, uh, number one overall pick a few years ago, and then looking at you know different other key players, you know, even though they got rid of Jabril Peppers, you know, they brought in a lot of key guys. So, you know, on the defensive side of the ball, do you think they're going to be able to contain, you know, the Pittsburgh Steelers offense and you're looking at even the Ravens and the Bengals? Uh, I believe so. Uh, with the guys you were even saying, I, you know, like... Olivier be, Vernon, too, st- players like that. Yeah, I was actually just looking. Uh, I know they got Olivier Vernon from the Giants, you know. That's having, like, they got a couple big names on defense, you know. I think they're going to be a more offensive team, maybe not like a defensive powerhouse. But their defense is definitely, like, top tier in the league. Maybe not, like, the greatest. But, you know, like, it's just a young guy. They're a bunch of young guys. You know, they're ready to win. It's been a while in Cleveland. I think, you know, get, having a couple, like, guys shining Sheldon Richardson and stuff, they'll help lead this these young guys. You know, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be big for them, and they're going to have they're gonna be ready to win this year. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, so, you know, just something I saw the other day on NFL Live. They were talking about, you know, the AFC North, obviously, and they brought up the point – with the Browns resurgence coming about and they look back at the Steelers and one of the commentators said they want to see, you know, the Browns actually do it before they believe it's going to happen, you know, dethroning the Pittsburgh Steelers from, you know, reigning that division. Do you think the Steelers just looking at their roster now, obviously, you know, a few years ago they had the killer, the three killer bees and that, you know, two of them are gone. Do you think the Steelers can still, you know, kind of keep hold on that division for a few more years? Uh, I think this year, I think the Steelers, the Browns, and the Ravens, honestly, all three of them in that division are going to be pretty tight. You know, I understand Big Ben's obviously lost his weapons at Bell and Brown, but, you know, Big Ben's coming this year, and he's going to have, like, he's going to be playing with some fire as, like, you know, he's trying to prove himself now. Like, everyone's saying he's washed up, he's old, 
you know, people are saying, oh, he has no weapons anymore. But I think Big Ben's going to go out there and, like, prove a point this year. He can still play football, you know. He has Juju Smith-Schuster. He has James Conner. James Conner obviously emerged onto the scene and, like, had a big year last year. You know, Juju can be easily one of the best receivers, one of the top receivers in this league. So I, I think the Steelers, you know, it's going to be a tight division. It's going to be really fun to watch. Yeah, definitely. You know, just looking at, you know, even like the AFC West, you know, there's three, four, even four teams deep there. You know, every division this year outside of the AFC East, you know, you look, you know, one through four. And even, you know, even in the AFC and the NFC, you know, you look at all the teams. There's a lot of tight teams, you know, there's not really a powerhouse outside of, you know, the Patriots in their division. But just moving on, you know, talking about even the Ravens or, you know, another team in the AFC North. I mean, do you think Lamar Jackson, obviously, you know, they made the playoffs last year. They had a great run. But do you think Lamar Jackson can be, you know, a franchise quarterback with the way he plays, similar to like an RG3 type? Uh, you know, I, that, that's definitely like a big question mark. And um, I say like you give him another year, you know, I think he obviously, he, he merged onto the scene last year. He had a great year. He, he obviously did a lot of mix of scrambling and passing, you know, like, but I don't think he can be a franchise quarterback unless he tries, he can figure out how to get past the ball better, have more accuracy. You know, he was, he made a lot of bad throws and you know, in his playoff game last year, yeah, I know he, I, they had a lot of turnovers as an offense together, so they're going to need to protect the ball this year a lot better. I think he has a lot to improve. He could definitely be a franchise guy maybe in a couple of years, but he has a lot of improvements he has to make until he reaches that point. Yeah, awesome. Yeah, that's a great point. So just moving, you know, out of side the AFC North, I just wanted to touch on, you know, looking at the Texans division with the Colts. Um, those two teams, you know, kind of reigned that division along with, you know, Jacksonville's in the division. But looking at, you know, the Colts season last year, they were projected to, you know, have another washed up season. And all of a sudden they come out, Andrew Luck plays great and they win the division. Just in your opinion, do you think they can win it again? Or do you think, you know, Deshaun Watson is going to come into his own again, find it, figure it out. And with the emergence of their defense, with the additions of Tyron Matthew and obviously having J.J. Watt, and um, Jadavion Clowney, do you think they kind of, you know, take ahead of that Colts, you know, promise last year? Um, well, I, I still believe uh, the Andrew Luck and the Colts, specifically Luck, they don't get they don't get enough credit for. Um, you know, Andrew Luck, he's a great quarterback. He was injured. You know, he it was he cost him an entire season. But now I think he's start he's starting to find himself like his rookie year when he came into the league, and I think. The Colts are. I think the Colts will take this division with T. Y. Hilton, uh, Eric Ebron. They you know, had like twelve TDs last year, and you know they had the they, they signed they had Darius Leonard last year as a linebacker. So that that defense is starting to play, and if the defense can start playing well, and then Andrew Luck can still put up 28, 35 points game to game, and that defense can step up, I think the Colts can take that division. Mm, you know, just looking at. Even the Jacksonville Jaguars, you know, with the addition of Nick Foles and even the Titans in that division, you know, going 9-7 and seven last year. Any chance that, you know, the Jaguars, you know, were Super Bowl, not favorites, but, you know, Super Bowl contenders coming into the year. Do you think the Jaguars figure it out on the defensive side of the ball and with the emergence and the addition of Nick Foles and a key couple of different wide receivers and the running back position with Fournette coming back? Do you, Any chance you could see the Jaguars making the playoffs? Um, the Jaguars, I think, I think it's really smart they got Nick Foles, you know, Blake Bortles, I think it was like, he clearly wasn't doing well, and when the Jags had that number one defense in the league a couple of years back, you know, if they had, I think they had it like a Nick Foles type quarterback, they could have definitely won, won the Super Bowl that year. Yeah. Um, I think this year they're going to improve a lot with the additions of Nick Foles, you know, Leonard Fournette will have another great season, I think. I think the Jaguars would definitely be pretty good, but I don't think good enough because of the Texans and Colts in front of them mm. in the division. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, just going back to the NFC side of things, you look at the NFC South, and, you know, a few years ago the Falcons were in the Super Bowl, and even the Panthers were in the Super Bowl a few years ago. But all of a sudden, you know, they both go 7-9 and nine last year. Matt Ryan and Cam Newton, you know, have down years. 
And then all of a sudden, you know, the Saints go 13-3, and three, and they kind of look like the mold selves, you know, with the Drew Brees, obviously, you know, being one of the best quarterbacks of all time, and then the emergence of a few key wide receivers along with, uh, you know, their backfield of Alvin Kamara and Mel- uh, Mark Ingram last year. Mark Ingram's gone now. Any chance you can see the Saints go into the Super Bowl this year? Uh, yeah, I can definitely see the Saints um, going to the Super Bowl. You know, Drew Brees, he, uh, he's, he's on the older end of things, but yeah, he's ready to play. He was ready to play last year. You know, he, I think like he's kind of like Big Ben. You know, everyone's all, he's at the end of his career. Like, he's not going to make it anymore. But like, I think Brees, he has the weapons. He has Michael Thomas, one of the top top receivers in the league. Alvin Kamara, top running back in the league. They got the weapons. You know, they played really well last year. You know, one questionable call might have cost them from going to the Super Bowl. And I, I, I think the Saints are ready. I think Brees is ready to roll again and you know, win one more Super Bowl ring before he retires. Yeah, awesome. Yeah, so you know, just wrapping up with the you know going through all the divisions. The last one we haven't touched upon is the NFC West with the Rams obviously winning the NFC last year. Looking at that division, you know, obviously the bottom of the division is you know kind of rough with the Cardinals, even though they got Kyler Murray, they should you know not really be contenders. But you look at the Rams and you look at the Seahawks and you, you know. Seahawks have won the NFC West, you know, a lot of the, uh, I forget the exact amount, but, you know, probably, you know, six of the last seven years besides last year with the Rams. Any chance you could see Russell Wilson, you know, coming into the season with a little chip on his shoulder, kind of being doubted even last year? And, you know, even with the emergence of some of their defensive players, like Shaquem Griffin, and you're looking at, you know, some of their cornerbacks that they can take the division from the Rams? Or do you think the Rams... Are too powerful, you know, Jared Goff and Todd Gurley and even their defense? Um, so I think like every year, every year Russell Wilson, you know, plays with that chip on his shoulder, you know, he's a short, short quarterback, you know, and he never gets the credit. Everyone always doubts him year, year after year, but he always manages to get put together a winning season with whatever Seattle team he has. I personally don't think Seattle has enough, you know, on offense, they have Russell Wilson, but I don't think they have. They don't have that running back. Like they don't have that Marshawn Lynch, what they used to have when Russell Wilson was first coming into the league. They don't have the Legion of Boom with like Richard Sherman yeah. and all of them on defense. Like they they have an okay team, but not a team to compete with the Rams in, the, in their division. Awesome, yeah. So you know, just going before we get into the uh, kind of the playoff scenarios, just looking at that. Any hot takes, you know, personally from you? You know, kind of, you know, any like under the radar moves or anything, you know, any expectations for the season that you have that, you know, most people might not have? Um, if I, I look into it, you know, I still, I still see like, I still see the, uh, the you know, a lot of people are saying the Browns are going to be back this year, but like, I still feel like the Steelers, like you got to watch out for the Steelers year by year. Uh, Big Ben's still there. Like the Browns are... Yeah, everyone's saying I believe in the Browns too. That there's a good shot they're going to win that division, but like it's not just going to be easy. Uh, the Steelers are still there, and the Steelers are going to be there. And like you have to get through Big Ben, Juju Smith. Like that team's not falling apart yet. Like yeah. the, I think the Browns are definitely going to have like a great season and playoff expectations. But they just have to get through the Steelers, and even the Ravens are in that division. So yeah, like. I understand the Browns like they have high hopes this year, but like don't expect them to like win the Super Bowl just because like the Steelers are uh, you know they lost a couple yeah, guys. Yeah, kind of the depleted. Browns now yeah. adding all these guys. Yeah, yeah. So you know, just you know, kind of the last part of the segment, just running through the divisions one more time. You just want to give us your playoff predictions. You know, who's going to win each division? We're not going to go through you know every matchup, but you know. Just who do you think is going to take each division and the two wild card teams? And then after that, we'll just move into your Super Bowl predictions for the AFC and NFC. And who do you think, even though it's early, who do you think is going to have a chance? So we'll start off with the uh, AFC East. And I'm assuming you're going to have the Patriots win that division? Yeah, I'll have, that, I'll have the Patriots win that division for sure. Okay. And then, you know, just moving any chance now looking at the wild card, any wild card teams in that division or. You want to just keep on going. If I had, I, I like I like I was talking about earlier, I'd probably have the New York Jets as a wild card team this year. Okay, yeah, awesome. Yeah, so you know, just moving to the AFC North, you know, who do you think 
out of the Ravens, Steelers, and Browns takes the division, in your opinion? Um, I, I think the Browns take it by a uh, very close margin. Okay, yeah, awesome, yeah. Uh, any you know chances for the Ravens or Steelers in the wild card, or you do you think like the AFC South and West are too uh, you know gonna have another guy in there? I think the AFC South or the West will have another team. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So you know, just looking at you know, I mentioned you mentioned earlier about the Colts. You know, you think they're gonna win the division. So you are you gonna stick with them? Oh, I'm definitely gonna stick with the Colts. Okay, and any chance about you know? Even the Titans you can look at, or the Jaguars. I mean, that division, you know, there's four strong teams. Any wild card team in that division, or do you think it's going to be with the West, with the Chiefs or the Chargers? I think it's going to be the Texans who uh, will have have the other wild card spot. Okay, Okay, interesting. Yeah, so then the last AFC West, I'm assuming, just knowing you, you're going to take the Chiefs, I'm assuming? Yeah, I'm taking the Chiefs. Just a big reason, just because the Chargers, I still think they're going to be really well. Bill Rivers is definitely getting on the older end, and I know Melvin Gordon right now, he's planning on not going to um, training camp. He yeah. wants to get his contract, and he could have one of those Le'Veon Bell sit-out seasons. Yeah, so, you know, just, you know, before we move to the NFC, I just wanted to, you know, take a minute. You know, you just brought up an interesting, you know, hot take without us, you know, talking about hot takes. You right now have the Chargers not making it coming off a 12-4 and four season, and you have the Jets in. Do you... Do you think the Jets can really, you know, make it just coming off of, you know, a lot of depleting seasons over the Chargers? Uh, yeah, I definitely can. Um, yeah, I think it's like the Jets and the Browns will be like two big teams in the AFC this year that will like t- take a lot of people from by surprise this year. Um, the Texans and Colts will still hold their own as usual. I just think the Chargers right now, you know, like, Philip Rivers, he's getting older. You know, I think last year was their big season. Okay. They put it all together, and now they're having problems. But I believe Melvin Gordon's a big part of their offense, and if yeah. they can't figure out a contract without Melvin Gordon, I think that team could, if they don't have Melvin Gordon playing on the field, they will lose a lot more games than they did last year. Now, just before we move off the Chargers, if Melvin Gordon, you know, gets his contract, you know, situated – any chance you could see them taking a wild card spot still, or I could definitely see the Chargers taking that. I think the Chargers could be like that wild card spot between the the Jets and the Chargers. Okay. I think that would be if they can figure out something there. Okay. I don't think the Chargers are going to be nearly as good as a twelve and four team like they were last year. I think they'll be like a ten win team, nine win team because just because you know last year I think that, that yeah. was their year. They lost a few weapons too. If you look at you know Tyrell Williams. Yeah, yeah, for sure. They, they still, you know, I they have they still have Keen, Keen Allen though, right? Uh yeah, they have Keen Allen, and they got uh one of their uh, tight ends coming back, you know, coming off the of injury. So yeah, uh, Hunter he's... Hunter Henry. So you know, it should be interesting. Yeah, no, even Keen Allen though, like you know, he's an older, he's he's getting older. He's dealing. Yeah, with he's had a few career. injuries. Yeah. So like, yeah, you know, they're iffy right now, but like they they have the weapons. They just got to figure it out if they can stay healthy and. Yo, get Melvin Gordon back on the field. Okay, awesome. Yeah, so, you know, just going to the NFC real quick, you know, going to the NFC East, you want to just, you know, go one by one just real quick with your uh, predictions for each division and the two wild card spots? I'll let you just take the floor for a few minutes. Oh, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll go for it. Um, i start with the NFC East. Obviously, like, I'm a Giants fan. You know, NFC East, I mean, probably, it's probably not been the best division. In football in a while, there probably is more on the l- low tier end. Um, you know, the Cowboys probably been winning it between the Eagles and Cowboys every year. Um, I say this year, I think the Cowboys would take it again. I still like Dak. Dak was not as good as he was like his rookie season, but yeah, I think Ezekiel, Dak, they'll figure it out together. They figured it out last year, and I think they'll 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 win that division. And then, yeah, so just going to the NFC North, are you sticking with the Bears again? Or, you know, any, you know, Vikings coming off, you know, a high-expectation season and, you know, not living up to it? you think they take it? Or what's your opinion? Uh, yeah, so I would probably say I would go with the Bears definitely again with Mitch Trubisky. You know, he had a great year. He had a, um, 
Yeah, they, they're they're a young team with a lot of firepower as well. They're one of those top tier offenses, in my opinion. Mm. Uh, I think the Vikings will be better than they were last year. You know, having Kirk Cousins come over there, I I think it was his first year. You know, trying to find out, figure out a new offense. Yeah. For the, the Vikings instead of the Redskins, obviously. I think they'll do. I think both teams will uh, make the playoffs with the Vikings being the wild card team. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Just speaking, you know, with the Vikings, you know, Kirk Cousins. You're right, you know, kind of didn't really come into his own until not even late in the season. You know, all season it was kind of iffy with him. So, you know, coming off the off season, you know, I think he'll have a big year coming up next year. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I agree. Um, you know, you have, yes, you have two great receivers with Adam Deal and Stephon Diggs. Now running back, uh, you have Dalvin Cook. Coming you have back. a great tight end, Kyle Rudolph. Like, you have the weapons there. They can, I think the Bears have a little more firepower than them. But, like, the Vikings would definitely be a team to, you know, watch out for it in the playoffs this year. Definitely. Yeah, so, you know, just going to the NFC South, I'm assuming you're going to have the Saints win the, the division again, or? Yeah, actually, the Saints are, Saints for sure, I'm going to go with, uh, I think, Drew Brees, like I said. Drew Brees is good. This is I, this might be his year, you know. He, want, he wants one more Super Bowl ring, and I think he, he wants to go out as a champion. He wants to retire soon, and um, I think this is, this is going to be a year for them. Yeah, yeah. so this last division... Uh, before we, you know, wrap up and go to the Super Bowl real quick, you have the Rams winning it. I, I think you mentioned that before too. And then you having the Seahawks take the wild card spot, or are you going back to the Falcons or Panthers? What are you doing with the wild card spot? Um, so I definitely I'm gonna have the Rams win this division. Uh, that second wild card spot, I'll probably be between like I said, Seattle. I know they they took the wild card last year. Um, Seattle, I don't see, I don't know with Seattle because like, they're really questionable. Their offensive weapons, they don't have too much. They, like I was saying, their defense wasn't as strong as the, it once was. Uh, I think I would have to give the second wild card to the Falcons this year. Okay. Uh, I, I think in the second half of the year, if I'm not mistaken, I think they actually went, got pretty hot towards the end of the year. Yeah. They won three play. straight to end the year. So they, um, yeah. So like they, they obviously, you know, they struggled in the beginning. If they come out of the gates, you know, like they ended the season last year, the, I think the Falcons can easily secure a wild card spot. Yeah, and even uh, with the contract extension of uh, Grady Jarrett, their defensive lineman, and, you know, just looking at, you know, their offense is, like, too powerful to, you know, not put up the amount of points they need to win. And looking at last year, looking at their net point differential, you know, they were negative nine. So definitely if the defense steps up a little more, I can see them definitely coming back and making the playoffs. Yeah, yeah no, I totally agree. You know, I think we have to be seen in the past. Besides last year, obviously, last year is all like all teams in the making the playoff runs. But like in a couple of years ago, it was all about the defense. Who had the best defense? And mm. you know, the Falcons can just you get that defense just playing a little better. You know, with Matt Ryan and Julio Jones on the other side of the ball, I think they'll be okay. Yeah, yeah. So you know, just before we wrap up, you know, in the, like a few more minutes. Just who are your AFC and NFC teams going to the Super Bowl? And then, you know, we'll end shortly with uh, your Super Bowl uh, winner prediction just before the season starts. So you want, like, who, the AFC winner? Yeah, yeah, we won't, go through, we won't go through matchups and seeding teams. Just who do you think is your favorite in the AFC, NFC, and then who do you think is your favorite overall? Um, so... From the NFC, I'm definitely going to have the, uh, like I was saying before, I, I believe in the Saints this year. Okay. And a questionable call last year. They still have the Michael Thomas. They still have Alvin Kamara. And they still have Drew Brees. Who Drew Brees still can play quarterback. He's had one in the league today, I believe. Yeah, definitely. And, um, and against them, I probably would have, to, I'm probably going to have to go with the um, Chiefs. You know, another AFC matchup between the Patriots and the Chiefs. Uh, like in the championship game before the Super yeah. Bowl, uh, I had the Chiefs going up against beating the Patriots and going up against the Saints. Now, even with uh, you know the depletion of the running back position in Kansas City, you think they could still you know take down the dynasty of the Patriots next year? Uh, I definitely believe so. You know, the everyone think I know, like even myself, I always think that you know Tom Brady, you know, he's done this year. He's almost forty years old. Uh, I just think Patrick Mahomes, you know, having like the monster season he did last year, he still yeah. he still has the weapons, you know, he doesn't maybe not doesn't have the great running back as as well anymore. But you know, you saw Travis Kells at tight end. 
he's still he he, you know, he can do it on his own. That's why he's that's why he doesn't really he doesn't need the weapons out like other quarterbacks do. You know, it's I believe Mahomes can do it on his own. Yeah, 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 definitely. I think Mahomes, you know, the Chiefs definitely ha- are one of the favorites in the AFC. But just looking at the difference between the Patriots and Chiefs, the Patriots last year went eight, eight and zero at home, and the Chiefs went seven and one at home. So I think whoever has the higher seed in his home will definitely make the Super Bowl, just based off of you know past you know records looking at home versus road. So definitely something to look out for. Yeah, no, home field advantage will go a long way, especially in the playoffs. So yeah, definitely. Yeah, so, you know, just before, you know, we wrap up, we just want to say, you know, thanks for joining the Competitor Talk podcast. You know, it was great having you on, talking football. You know, we got through a lot of different stuff, you know, going from each division to a lot of different, you know, key players and different, you know, acquisitions. So we thank you for coming on and, you know, enjoy the rest of your day and summer. And uh, we look forward to talking to you and, you know, seeing if your predictions pan out in the future. Yeah, no, thank you. Thank you guys for having me on. I really appreciate it. Um, you know, I always love talking sports, whether it be any anything, you know. I love talking football all the time. I love talking about predictions and, you know, what could happen. You know, NFL could shock you like I think it did last year with a lot of new teams. And I think this year it will be the same thing. There will be a, a lot of teams you don't expect to do really well this year, you know, come onto the scene and, like, take a lot of people by surprise again. Yeah, awesome. Thanks. Yeah, so, you know, enjoy the rest of your day and, you know, have a, you know, good rest of your uh college career and you know we wish you the best in your future yeah thank you for sure have a good day you too yeah so that was nick nanner uh, from seton hall university fantasy football guru just talking you know a lot of different teams obviously we got through all the d- different divisions and you know this year he's got the uh you know chiefs and saints going into the super bowl so it should be an interesting year and you know we'll see if his predictions pan out and have a good day